Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I took this Water Snake T24 trolling motor and converted it to remote control using this one-handed remote for throttle and steering. So you might notice that I already modified the trolling motor with this um, gearbox and you can see the antenna sticking out here for the RC. So while using gears was a good idea for the steering, right, the way these gears work is there's a servo under here that this top gear is connected to, and then the second gear is connected straight to the motor shaft, but it's completely separate from the bracket that the servo is on, and the motor is able to tilt like that, and then it skips gears so the steering isn't exactly uh, reliable. So in order to stop the gears from being able to skip, I printed this new box. This has a shaft that goes down inside of the bracket that the servo is connected to. So the servo gear and the sh uh, motor gear are always stuck together so the teeth can't skip. So I'm going to show you, since I have to take it apart to replace the gears anyways, I'm going to show you how I set this all up. To take the motor head off, there are four screws up under here. Here here and two on the other side and then there's one screw right here to take the head the rest of the way off so i'm going to take the top of the motor head off real quick and show you what electronics i'm using for this so inside the motor head i have this um, brushed esc it's a radio link cl9030 and this actually provides the power out to the hot rc f06a RC receiver. Then that has the antenna running out from where the handle for the regular steering is. Plugged into the RC receiver, I have a servo extender that takes it from the servo turning 90 degrees to the servo being able to turn 180 degrees, so 90 in either direction. Then for the power switch for the ESC, I just have the high-low speed switch that was already in the motor. And I just have it connected to two of the ports on that, so I flipped this switch to turn it on. Then the modifications I made to the actual motor itself, I took the forward off and reverse switch out of here. There was a black wire, a red wire, and a blue wire coming out of the motor. The black is ground. The blue was connected to the low speed side of the speed switch. Red was connected to the high speed side. So you're just gonna use the black wire and the red wire. And then on this particular ESC, yellow is ground and blue is the hot wire. So you'll connect the red one to the blue wire and the black one to the yellow wire. Then you plug the servo extender into channel one on the RC receiver and the other end of the servo extender plugs in the signal wire from your servo. On this servo, it has a yellow, red, and brown wire. You want the yellow wire to line up with the white wire on the servo extender. To get the cables out from the motor head, I just have them running down through where the, through this port here. I took the factory battery wire that came with the trolling motor and connected it to the red and black wires on the ESC. There's this, um, these little clips right here that hold the wires out of the way so you could put the handle back in. So in order to take the motor head completely off, you'll need to move those two clips just under these little screws right here. Then move these clips out of the way and then um, just undo the screw and the head will come off completely. Okay, now that I got the motor head off and those two wires disconnected, I can take this um, motor gear off. I designed this one so the hole in the middle is the same diameter as the motor shaft itself. And then I have a one millimeter gap so when you install the bolt, it squeezes together and stops it from moving. It's a pretty snug fit while you're putting it on, so that helps it stay in place. And then this slides off. On the water snake trolling motor, there's a little red cap right here on the top of the tilt release button. You just pull that off, it slips off with a pair of pliers or anything. In the design, I left a hole right here, and that hole will line up with the tilt lever. And then you slip this over and get the motor set to the height that you want it to. This one is, the motor is just below the base of the kayak, but also the blades stay below the water line. So this will just sit flush like that and the motor bracket itself will stop this from turning and the tilt lever doesn't get in the way. This design does make it to where you can't tilt the motor up anymore. I know a lot of people still want to have that functionality. 
so this might not be the best design for them, but anyone who is interested in this design, I'll have this whole gear set and uh, bracket uploaded to Thingiverse. Before you install this gear, I like to take the depth collar that's normally above the motor mount and put it below the mount on the shaft to stop the motor from coming up. And this gear right here will stop the motor from going down at all. But then for the second gear, the one that actually turns everything, these servos come with this little four-way bracket right here. So then you just screw this bracket into the gear. I have the four holes. You might be able to see them there. I have those four holes to where if you use those when you're putting this in, it perfectly centers the gear. And then this slips onto this little output shaft from the servo. And then there's a retention screw that goes down inside there. So you just snug that screw down and now this um, gear is stuck firmly to the servo. And then this whole thing just slides down into this channel right here. And I have a slot here for the cables so it won't crimp them down at the bottom. The next thing to do is reinstall the motor head. So you just run those cables back up through. You'll see this little nut right here and this hole, just line the hole and the nut up with the hole that's already drilled in the um, motor shaft. Then you just use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten that down. And then once you have that tightened, you just get these little clips put back in place. So at this point you have two options. You can either push this handle back in or take it out completely. This time around I'm actually going to take it out completely because um, that does add just a little bit more airflow in here and I don't want the speed controller getting hot and it also gives a little bit more room to put everything back in here. So I'm going to feed the battery cable back down through this hole and feed the servo wire up into the hole. I'm going to use this little clip that goes inside this hole to hold these wires in place. When this clip is in place that came with the motor head to hold these wires, it holds it tight in place and then you just um, plug your servo extender back into the actual servo wire. After you have the motor head put back on and you have your wires secured, you need to reconnect the uh, motor wires to the speed controller. And for this, you can either use quick connect, the wires that just plug together, or you can solder the wires together and use heat shrink to cover them. Now that I have the positive and negative from the motor connected to the speed controller, I take the signal wire from the speed controller and plug it into channel two on the remote or on the RC receiver and I make sure that there's enough slack right here on both this wire and the servo wire to where these can lay flat and I have the antenna wire from the RC receiver sticking out and then I plug these two wires from the speed controller back into the switch make sure that I could put the top of the head back on without crushing the wires or anything and that just takes a little bit of um, moving these around back and forth until they line up well with this or you can carve out this rib right here that way it's not in the way and you have more room for your wires i'll be back in a second when this is put back together and i could show you how it works okay so this is what it looks like when it's all put together i think it looks fairly clean all you gotta do is plug it in and flip the switch Okay, so that is one thing that can happen when you, or the first time you turn it on, is the servo will so straighten itself out. So the servo straightened itself out, that's the natural center point of the servo. Just pick the motor up and center the motor to where the gears line up properly. And then just pick your retention collar back up and tighten it down. All right, so I'm out here at the bay and as you can see, it's incredibly windy, but I'm gonna do the first on the water test with this current setup. As you can see, it's controlled by this remote. All right, so I paddled out away from the ramp, so I'm not gonna hit the motor on anything and I'm just gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna go look, or forward a little bit, press the button on the back and that sets it in cruise control. And then um, I could press this button up or down to adjust the um, the steering on the motor if I need to fine adjust it to go straight. And then, um... all right, my steering is backwards again. All right, so I just looked it up. For this specific remote, if your steering is backward, turn the remote off, hold down the four button right here, and then turn the remote on. You'll hear it make a beeping noise and then the screen will start flashing and then you push the stick all the way to one side and then it will beep a couple more times, saving the setting, and then test your steering. If it's still backwards, turn the remote off, 
do the same thing, but push the stick all the way to the other side. Now you can see my steering is correct. So correcting the steering on this is really easy if it's backwards when you first set it up. Once you set the cruise control, you could press up on the throttle to go faster. And then if I want to stop, I just press the button and the motor turns off. As far as whether or not I'm happy with the way this turned out, like I could not be happier with how this motor is doing for this little kayak. I'm going to leave links down below to everything that I used to do this project. The remote, the servo, the speed controller, and the exact motor that I'm using. That's pretty much all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the next one.